Avast ye, scurrilous scalawags. Welcome to me piratey ancient art podcast. I'm your crotchety captain, Bottoms Up Livingston. On ship's deck, we have the bounteous booty of the finest goblet from the sea-swept island of Volki, the cup of the god of wine himself, twice born of two mothers, master of madness Dionysus. And with this cup comes the tall tale of the time when Dionysus was besieged by an unlucky band of outlaw pirates. For some background on Dionysus, the ancient Greek god of wine, theater, ecstasy, and madness, Check out episode 84, The Birth of Dionysus, at ancientartpodcast.org slash 84. There we meet Dionysus' parents, the god Zeus and mortal Semele. We learn of her untimely fate and discover why, among Dionysus' many nicknames, we call him the twice-born god. Legends of the great god of wine and reverie are replete with suggestions of alcohol's potent power as a transformative potion. One of my favorite tales of alcohol-induced magical metamorphosis is Dionysus and the Tyrrhenian Pirates, which is beautifully rendered on an ancient Greek Kylix wine cup, the so-called Dionysus cup from around 540 to 530 BC by the master, painter, and potter Exekius. Although he was the son of Zeus and part of the Olympian pantheon, The Greeks often considered Dionysus to be somewhat foreign and exotic, like some rich kid sent abroad to boarding school for most of his youth, and now he wears a beret and scarf indoors. The god's taste for foreign fashion often makes him stand out in a crowd, and in this case, that gets him into a bit of a pickle. Our earliest source for this fabulous legend of the god is the Homeric hymn number 7, the hymn to Dionysus from the 7th or 6th century BC. We catch up with Dionysus having gone for a pleasant stroll along the salty shore in the form of a handsome young man with rich dark hair, dripping with exotic fineries and princely burgundy garb. Alas, a ruthless band of Tyrrhenian pirates sailing along the shore happens upon the god and kidnaps him, believing him to be a wealthy prince whom they could hold for ransom. A humorous detail added to the story some centuries later in Ovid's Metamorphosis shares that Dionysus happens, unsurprisingly, to be punch drunk on wine at the time. He seemed to reel, half-dazed with wine and sleep, Ovid writes. Once the pirates nab the god and escort him onto their ship, they seek to bind him to the ship's mast. To their surprise, with uncanny magical ease, the fetters fall away from the god's hands and feet, and he sits there with a wry smile in his dark eyes. Having at that moment the realization that their guest is not as he seems, the ship's helmsman cries out to his mates, Madmen! What god is this whom you've taken and bind, strong as he is? Not even the well-built ship can carry him. Surely this is either Zeus or Apollo, who has a silver bow, or Poseidon, for he looks not like mortal men, but like the gods who dwell on Olympus. Come then, let us set him free upon the dark shore at once. Do not lay hands on him, lest he grow angry and stir up dangerous winds and heavy squalls. His mates do not heed the warning, and Dionysus unleashes his wrath as strange things are seen about them. Sweet, fragrant wine runs streaming through the pirate's black ship. Vines dripping with clusters of grapes spread across the tops of the sails, enveloping the ship, while dark ivy, blooming with flowers and berries, entwines the ship's mast. At this moment, the ship's crew finally recognizes their folly and deeply regrets not having heeded the prophetic words of the helmsman. Alas, it's entirely too late. For the god himself transforms into a dreadful lion and summons illusions of ferocious wild beasts, the leopard or panther, sacred to the god, and yes, quite literally, lions, tigers, and bears. Oh my! As the beasts lunge, the terrified pirates promptly jump overboard into the sea's cold embrace. 
But the god enjoys the last laugh as the pirates transform into dolphins upon striking the waves. Only the helmsman, who enjoyed the change of heart, is spared to tell this tale of the wrath of Dionysus. The interior of the Dionysus cup reveals the larger-than-life, resplendent deity reclining within a ship. Its unfurled sails, catching full wind and the mast festooned with vines and clusters of grapes, raining wine on deck. Flitting about the scene, our poor brigands turned dolphins leap and dive within an imagined wine-dark Mediterranean backdrop. As with the Circe cup, which we looked at in episode 87 of the podcast about Circe and witchcraft in ancient Greece, we enjoy another playful visual treat on the Dionysus cup. Here, the exterior of the cup humorously bears the painted image of large, glaring eyes. Playful cups of this sort are not entirely uncommon in the corpus of ancient Greek ceramics and go by the modern connoisseur's ingeniously descriptive designation of, wait for it, eye cups. While the drinker of wine holds the cup aloft to his lips, quaffing the intoxicating concoction, he seems to don a bestial mask, like the Gorgon Medusa whose gaze would petrify. Or perhaps more poignantly, if the stem becomes a snout and the handles the ears, the drinker then becomes a pig, like Odysseus's men transformed by Circe's potent potion of wine. Go back and check out episode 87 again at ancientartpodcast.org 87 for a refresher on Circe and the pig reference. We've repeatedly encountered the theme in ancient Greece of alcoholic intoxication as a magical means of metamorphosis into ignoble beasts. Episode 3's donkey-headed Riton cup, the aforementioned eye cups, and the MFA's Circe cup offer readily accessible allusions to inebriation begetting transformation, while the tale of Dionysus and the pirates decorating the interior of the Dionysus cup features a more restrained reference to intoxication's metamorphic magic. The first of Dionysus' phantasms is a wave of sweet wine that washes through the ship and drenches the pirates before they jump into the sea. Personally, I like to think more than a fair share of the wave of wine found its way down their throats, because... After all, when your ticket's up and you're gonna go down fighting the god of wine, it might as well be in an alcohol-induced stupor. But then, I don't know, is it fair to regard dolphins as the asses and swine of the sea? Thanks for tuning in to the Ancient Art Podcast. Check out ancientartpodcast.org slash 90 for references, footnotes, and image credits for this episode. If you have anything to add to the conversation, you can add a comment there or on YouTube. You can get in touch with me directly at info at ancientartpodcast.org or on the web at ancientartpodcast.org slash feedback. If you enjoy the podcast, please consider sharing some fiscal love. Whether it's the cost of a cup of coffee or more, your donations help keep this ship afloat on our odyssey sailing the wine-dark seas. Just click the donate button at ancientartpodcast.org. And if you can't donate a drachma, you can help the podcast by adding an iTunes review. Maybe it'll even get you on the air, like Jan Skill, who writes, So pleased to have discovered this series of podcasts. The host combines discussions with images and references to collections and museums, both in the States and abroad. His style is direct and approachable. Altogether, a delight to experience. I've been haunting the additional resources on the website as well. Thanks for listening, and see you next time.